Hello, procrastinators, and welcome to Three Fab Games Friday, the only show that lets you know when it's a Saturday. Today, on the Three Games, what I has got for you, we've got a psychedelic Metroidvania, we've got a game about learning languages, and we've got a game where you get to build the front of a house. Oh, oh, oh I spoil you, I really do. Ultros is a unique and psychedelic metroidvania with a colour palette on par with the vomit of a child who's just been through an overnight lock-in at Wonka's Chocolate Factory. You'll venture amongst these oranges, purples and greens, collecting power-ups and battling nasty enemies before accidentally triggering a time loop and having to do it all over again. That's right, it's gaming's hot topic, time loops. Only this time, Things are a bit different. The map layout, enemy placement and power-ups don't shift around when time loops back on itself. Meaning that this isn't a roguelite, it's simply an odd metroidvania. Think Outer Wilds and then stop thinking about Outer Wilds because it's actually nothing like that. What it is about is gardening. As you wander around the map, likely getting lost, you'll come across seeds. Pop them in some fertile soil and a little sapling or plant will sprout spreading highlighter coloured tendrils all about the place. A few loops later and the saplings have become fruit bearing climbable trees and the plants have torn through walls that will allow you to swing off them. Who needs a double jump when you've got the mystical powers of Alan Titchmarsh? It's here where Ultros really, brace yourself, blossoms. Remember those nasty enemies I mentioned? Well. What if they're just hungry? What if the fruits you are growing can sate them, allowing a well-prepared player to pass by them unharmed? Just because this place is ugly doesn't mean you have to be. And that's Ultras! It's out now on PC and PlayStation and is yet another game where you're trapped in a space uterus orbiting a black hole, acting as midwife to an unknowable cosmic entity. Mm. Chance of Sonar is a stunning detective puzzle game about learning a fictional language from nothing but context clues and common sense. To explain how this utterly unique system works, I'll demonstrate with the first puzzle of the game. You, a robed figure, have two objects in front of you, a door and a lever. One way the lever can go is marked with two glyphs, and the other, one different glyph, one the same. You pull the lever, the door opens. You pull it to the other side, the door closes. You should now have a really good idea about what those glyphs could mean. If not, consider a career in politics. Now, with two words under your belt, you can explore on. Meeting the strange inhabitants of this tower, learning their history, and every now and then sneaking past a few of the more weaponized ones. As you travel, you'll learn new words, new grammatical rules, and then you'll meet someone who speaks a different fictional language and you'll have to learn that one too. In fact, you'll have to learn five and then act as a translator between all of them. I'm genuinely surprised there's not a bonus level where you have to complete tongue twisters as quickly as possible. On top of all this puzzling brilliance, there are also some delightful set pieces. In one, you have to dress as an enemy soldier, join a group of them mid-march and take commands from a higher up. If you've not learned the difference between box and bottle by then, you're going to have a seriously bad day. On the bright side, at least you can swear back at them as they beat you up in their own language. And that's Chance of Sonar! It is out now on PC, PlayStation, Switch and Xbox, and I managed to beat it despite getting a bad grade in my German GCSE. Uh, you. With two dots above it. <laughs> Summer House is a cosy, lazy summer afternoon of a building game where you have nothing to do but put together a cute little house. 
There are no goals, no time limits, no pressures, just you, a brilliant blue sky and a big heap of building blocks which slowly grow larger as you play. Like Lego mixed with tribbles. While the game is entirely perceived from a 2D perspective, the designing actually has an element of the third dimension about it. Each part you wish to place can be moved closer or further away from the screen, giving you options for depth and details like gardens, alleyways and awnings. Sure, you're not going to be able to build, say, a one-to-one -one replica of Hull in it, but as the areas are quite wide, you can actually craft a decently sized street here, complete with your own knockoff version of Arkwright. I'm seriously hoping for some Granville or even Nurse Gladys Emanuel DLC. Then there's the story, a dark twisted tale as evil Joe Casey takes his revenge on his parallel timeline and... Nah, no, I'm messing with you. This is a tiny game, it's only £4 and it embraces that. You get as much playtime from it as you want for the price of what I assume a Freddo costs these days. It's light, it's warm, it's relaxing, it's like a thin spray of sunlight coming through the window while you nap. And that is Summer House. It's out now on PC, and unlike the real summer, you don't have to fight off wasps to enjoy it.